a carve, a foam pumpkin. You can pick it up at any craft store. Um, they're nice to have because you can reuse them every year. Right, you, don't you don't have, have to get to, rid right, of them. You can build on if there's one that you did that you love, okay, we don't have to throw it out. We can right. keep it. For the kids, because we have a two-year-old now, um, <laughs> and she doesn't know how to carve yet, but she can pick out her own eyes, her own nose, her own mouth. So you can put a bunch on the table. You can have your kids pick up any eyes they want. They can put them on, you can trace them, and then you can cut them out. But and they feel they like it's it. their pumpkin. They did right. it. A lot of people use, um, you know, different knives at house. The, the best, what I have, is a box cutter. It actually cuts really... For a foam pumpkin, for it a foam gives you pumpkin, a smoother cut. It's and much stronger than those little yep. pumpkin knives that you get yep. in the grocery stores, like yep. that one. Yeah. Yep. This these is are, much tougher. These this are good tougher. to use because for like the... The, the detail work. The detail right, the work, detail exactly. work. Right. And the good thing about using the fake pumpkin, pumpkins is that you don't have to a big mess. So, uh, can I show them some of these? Yeah, yeah, this would be our finished product of the pumpkin that we These just are amazing. Inside. And then how are we going to illuminate so, them? So, you can take one and you're going to crack that and shake it up. You got crack it. You can throw wow! it in there. <laughs> And the nice Throw thing about this is you can put whatever color you want. Oh, my fell out. You can change yeah. it. Yeah. Hey. What are you going to show us? All right, so I came up with this idea. I wanted my house to really look like a haunted house. So, I mean, looking at a haunted house, you know, what, what's the first thing you'll see? The boards on the windows. This is what I did. I came up, I went to my local hardware store, and I picked up um, insulation foam, the pink or the blue stuff, which is what we have right here. That's this stuff. OK, Super right cheap and cheerful, and it'll keep you warm in a pinch. Exactly. Now, you can get thinner stuff. It doesn't have to be this thick. It could be a little thinner. No, um, it looks good thick. Get the thick But it does. It does look good. All right, so now what, what I did, what we did here was um, we painted it a base color. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a dry brush technique. So we're going to go with some grays and some lighter colors right now, and we're going to actually create the effect of wood grain. So the best brush to use would be this. It's a dragging, it's called a dragging brush. <sighs> so, so this is what we're going to do. Okay. We'll, we'll go with, we'll go with a, a medium tone, like a gray and we'll slowly drag it across. Like you drag bodies through exactly. the dirt. But we're gonna, we're gonna put more on, we're gonna put more on. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put more. Now by wiggling it, when you wiggle the brush, that's also gonna help create the wood graining effect. Now we're gonna actually dip with another color. We're gonna use the same brush. Actually. Oh, the same yeah, brush? We, I we, wanna we, do something. All right, so you wanna do something. Right, get perfect, perfect. A little bit, all right? right? So bring, bring it from this edge. A little wiggly. <laughs> little bit. A little, little wiggly. Bit. Yeah, a little bit. Right. There you go. Okay. It's a one hour show, Joe. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush real quick right. over it. It's going to blend some of this together. I got a good hold brush. on it. All so right, her. there we go. All Wait, right. one more thing. What? One more thing we forgot nail heads. Oh, just the nail heads. Because so so you're you not going to make exactly, holes in the side exactly. of your no, house. No, you're not going to do that. So, you're going to just do a couple of nail heads over here as though it was put in. And it's wet, so when we put it on, just grab the edges. And then we stick it on the doodad. Right there, like that. And there you go. So here we're going to start with a portrait. And what we're going to do, this is my dad, as you noticed from the, uh, from the intro. I want to include him because this is really his tip. We're going to make his eyes follow you using an optical illusion. It's really, really simple, and I believe all of you folks can do this at home. OK. So what we're going to start by doing is we're going to cut out the eyes right here. OK. And I actually have a pre-cut. The eyes are gone here. We're going to cut a ping pong ball in half. OK. And we're going to use the ping pong ball for Wait, eyes. So we're going to take this X-Acto knife right here. OK. Uh, any knife can do. You could even use a kitchen knife if you have one. Not my kitchen knife. You <laughs> use the X-Acto knife. I have a Rachel Ray kitchen set. Oh, thank you. So we're going to cut this real quick. Now, you always want to cut away from you, of course, because you don't want to hurt yourself. Right. Once you get about 3 quarters of the way done, you can just stop, and it'll snap open on its own, gotcha. like so. Now gotcha. you've got two eyeballs. And you'll notice that they are concave on the inside. This is going to be what creates our illusion. OK. Now, my eyes are green, and my dad, dad's eyes are also green, so we're going to use this green marker. But if you want to go for a demonic effect, you can use a red marker. <laughs> All right, so now we've got some green for the iris, and we're going to use the pupil. It's going to be black. OK. So we're going to put that in there. We're doing dad's other eyeball. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Rachel. We're just going to put the eyeballs right here and tape them on. Tape them on. I can handle tape. Or, or not, not so much. <laughs> or you can put it in a frame like this. Doesn't it look good? 